Hi, my name is Bailey Averett, and today I'm going to be presenting on English language, English language learners, also known as EL students. So first, we need to know what an English language learner is. According to English language learners, one of these students is a student who comes from a non-English speaking home and who is currently learning English. Although many ELL students may have developed basic communication skills in English, they still struggle with academic language. So who is accepted into the program and who is served? Those who are served are non-native English speakers and those who struggle with academic language. Again, their basic communication skills or their non-academic language may seem proficient, but their academic language skills are still not good enough to really help them help them succeed or excel in your typical American school. To qualify for the ESL program, parents are given a two question survey. Those two questions are, what language is spoken at home most, most of the time? And what language does the child speak most of the time? Then the student is given a proficiency test according to state profile. This proficiency test gauges their oral proficiency and there's a different test for kindergartners and then a different test for those who are in first through 12th grade. So what does the program provide for these students? There are two main programs that we use in the state of Texas. Those are content-based programs and pull-out programs. The content-based program has students in normal classes um, and the teachers are ESL certified and give those children the supports they need in their regular classes. A pull-out program takes the students out of their regular classrooms and gives them a class that's specifically for ESL students. In these classes, they develop the following skills. Reading, writing, listening, and speaking. These are also going to be the skills that they are tested on, which we will get to later in our monitoring and evaluation section. They are also provided different language supports and accommodations according to the Texas Education Agency, and this helps them succeed in their regular classrooms as well as in their ESL classrooms. What staff are involved in the program? First of all, you have a district representative, which is normally your administration, the ESL coordinator, the ESL teachers, students, and parents. Normally, all of these components come together to create the Language Proficiency Assessment Committee, also known as LPAC. With curriculum interventions and instructional approaches, the curriculum can be adjusted and there can be different curriculum specifically for ESL students. A lot of the time, teachers will have, say, a story and the Lexile level will be lowered down for your ESL students who maybe can't understand certain academic words just yet. And also they're given additional language supports. For example, in a lot of online curriculums, the text can be highlighted and read aloud. With the interventions, interventions are determined whenever we see students are struggling. So really it's up to the teachers and the other members of the LPAC committees to monitor these students to see if they need interventions. And one of the first steps to see if these students do need interventions is to get them into small groups. Sometimes with ESL students, they are nervous to speak in front of groups because they are not confident in their English speaking abilities yet. But if they're put into small groups, it's more likely that the teacher will be able to see a clear um, representation of the student's English language abilities. The instructional approaches that teachers can use are visual aids, to make sure that they are scaffolding the content and using sentence stems. For monitoring and evaluations, most of this is monitored by the LPAC committee. The LPAC committee will, the LPAC committee will monitor things such as their state testing scores, so like their STAR test or their EOCs. They're also monitored yearly by taking the TELPOS assessment. This gauges their ability to read, write, um, listen and speak in English. When they take these tests, they are given a grade of either beginner, intermediate, advanced, or advanced high in these categories. Just because a student may score an intermediate level in their writing doesn't mean that they're intermediate overall. They could score intermediate in listening, but advanced in writing, um, and maybe even a beginner in speaking. So not all of the levels are necessarily the same. Once they technically 
um, get advanced high and exit the ESL program, they still have two additional years of monitoring in which the LPAC community monitors their progress to make sure that they should have actually been exited from the program. Common, mis common mistakes that many teachers make when dealing with ESL students is that they don't communicate well with students. They normally talk too quickly, they don't provide enough wait time, or they finish the sentences or ideas for the students. To remedy this, it is vital that teachers provide enough wait time for students to develop their own ideas in English and respond. And also, as teachers, we should be speaking slowly and clearly and, mon or, and modeling good English practices. Another mistake that a lot of teachers make is not providing feedback quickly or efficiently. So teachers should provide feedback and practice correct techniques. So with this, um, say for instance, a student uses an incorrect word. Now, a teacher shouldn't immediately correct that student and tell them the right word. Instead, they should respond with the correct word so the student can see their own mistake instead of being immediately corrected and shot down. And then here are my references for this presentation. Thank you for watching.